Everyone knows that we will be recording all the sessions. There we go. And we'll be posting them to YouTube afterwards. We recognize that not everyone is able to um, always stay uh, to access all the sessions. People's internet go up and down, goes up and down. So we're going to be uh, posting sessions on YouTube afterwards. So good morning, everyone. It's my distinct pleasure to be able to welcome you to week zero of cohort A. This is the seventh time we're doing this training. And we've had uh, just under 500 applications. And as you all know, I think most of you have heard about the work that we've, we do. Our goal is to help identify uh, high potential people. And we're confident that all of you are high potential uh, young people. And our measure is really helping people get into work. That's our raison d'etre. That's why we're here. And we're convinced uh, from looking at the results that we've had in the past that employers in the world out there in the field of AI are looking for people like you. Now, we have a, we're a small private organization, and we have a limited ability to train everyone. And we have a very specific amount of time that we're able uh, to do that within. And that's why we, are, um, we have to run a selection process. And each of you has participated in the selection process thus far. Um, when uh, we started a couple of years ago, we started thinking about what is the most fair way for us to decide who we're able to train. And we thought about, uh, do we look at your past results? Um, do we look at uh, a nice essay that you've written? Do we look at a piece of code that you submitted? And we've tried to include some of that, but uh, the main thing that we're looking at is what's going to happen this week. <clears throat> Excuse me where we want to provide you with a, um, a setup, infrastructure, tutoring, support, uh, a community. And we want to see who's able to respond to that, because that's, that's our mechanism of training. Uh, probably, so I don't know if there's a question. We'll take questions at the end. Um, and that's what we've set up as part of week zero. Um, so our goal, as I mentioned, so my name is Arun Sharma. I'm one of the co-founders, uh, together with Yeba Bell. And uh, I'm going to be working with you uh, together with other members of the team on the careers and the operations side of our work. Um, so our goal is, as I mentioned, we have uh, three goals. Uh, we want to identify high potential young people. Uh, and so this process, we know it's not perfect. So if uh, somebody doesn't get through, and not everyone here will get through. Um, so I hope everyone can hear me. Brian says he can't hear me properly. but. I'm hoping that it's OK. Um, we're looking to identify high potential young people. Um, we're looking to get them ready with the relevant technical and career skills to be able to get jobs at the global level. And we are then going to put together a system and support to enable people to get those jobs. And that's uh, for us over the past years. The system has been uh, very successful. We have lots of people who have gone on to uh, not only get their first job, but also to grow very quickly in those jobs. <laughs> and so this week, and I'm going to keep it brief, but this week is part of that selection process. Um, and basically, we're looking for three things. And that's why we would encourage you um, to allow to demonstrate to demonstrate those three things. So what are those three things? The first is work ethic. Um, the second is curiosity. And the third is your ability to support other people in the community. So I'm just going to go through those one by one. So work ethic is um, we have five days together, and we have five different challenges or five different parts of the challenge. Um, this week, you're going to be submitting every day. And we believe, and we've seen in the past, that anyone who puts the work in, asks questions, relies on the tutors for support, relies on the other members of the community for support, will be able to get the work done. But for some people, it'll take a little bit of work. And for some people, it'll take a lot of work. So we're really assessing who's ready and able to put uh, the work into it. Uh, the second is curiosity. So much of what we are asking you to learn or asking you to submit is doable, but it may take a certain amount of active learning. So we're very much not uh, a Coursera type of course where you have to sit there. And I think if we're all honest, all of us have clicked through some of those courses and just trying to get it, get through it as quickly as possible. We're definitely not Coursera um, or other learning platforms where being in attendance and clicking through and somehow managing on the test is uh, your mode of operation. We're looking for people who are curious. We're going to figure something out. 
And if they don't know, they ask. If they're not sure, they'll try. Um, so that curiosity is another thing that we're looking for. And finally, um, we're looking for people who are going to be good and successful members of a community. And that's intentional because we are preparing people not only to get a degree, but the people who are successful, in our opinion, in the world of work at the global level are those who can work with other members of their team. There are almost no teams, or there are no teams that I know of where individual contributors are able to make a, uh, a difference. You will all, almost always be measured based on the results uh, or the impact or the output or the code or uh, whatever it is of the people around you on the team. So from this week, uh, I think that's part of the mindset shift that we're going to uh, try and inculcate. We will be looking for people who are ready to spend time to jump on a call, to answer a question, to help out uh, other members of the team, other members of the, the training court who are here. So I'm gonna go through that again. Um, we're looking to measure work ethics. Are you putting the work in, time in front of the computer, thinking, reading, learning, submitting, updating your code, testing, just putting the work in, curiosity, reading, learning, active learning, and finally, are you ready to help others? Now, when we put all of this together, we believe that our process has continued to improve over the past, uh, since 2017, so over the past six years, and we, uh, we remain very optimistic that we're going to be able to put together our largest cohort ever. We have 75 spots. I think everyone who's here at week zero is looking for a deferred tuition payment. And what that means is that um, we are going to be using uh, your results here along with an interview, along with uh, the code that you've submitted before and the applications that you've submitted before to gauge who do we think is most likely uh, to be able within the time frame allotted and using our system to make the jump into a global level job and then to um, make their tuition payment back so that we can continue to train future batches. So. We're very excited, uh, we're very uh, happy to have you here. We especially welcome the women in our group and I'll say just a personal message as the father of a 15 year old girl, we are committed to getting as close to 50-50 uh, as possible. We want to have 50% women, 50% men, and we recognize that the pathways to uh, acquiring knowledge or to learning and the approaches are different. I also have a, a teenage son, so I recognize that there are differences but uh, we are committed to getting as close to 50-50 as possible. And so we really welcome uh, the women who are here um, and we look forward to as many of you uh, submitting every day, even if things are not perfect, just submit what you have. And you ha you'll have to trust us when we say that the women probably, actually not probably, based on the numbers, do better at job placement than the men do. So we're happy to have you here. But uh, I'll stop there just with a warm welcome to everyone. Looking forward to uh, the work that you will do and working together with each and every one of you. Please, uh, actually, last point that I'll make. Uh, we had somebody in 2020, and his tagline is something that I'd like to steal. He was a Ghanaian, uh, and he said, in permanent beta. And so our system is something which is, uh, to an extent, also in permanent beta. We want to keep learning. We're going to keep experimenting. We we're going to be using uh, a new technology platform. Um, it's going to be updated, if not every day, then every week. And that means that there will be some growing pains along the way. And we're, we're fine with that. We apologize in advance um, while making no apologies for continuing to uh, learn and innovate and try and uh, figure things out. So just to say that if something doesn't go perfectly right, let us know. Uh, we are reactive. We are here. And I'll hand over to Yevabel with a uh, big welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Arun, and really welcome, everyone. Uh, it's very exciting to see 135 already live, and that's really good. Probably that's maybe the biggest, um, if I'm not mistaken, that I've seen that number. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm wrong, but it's really good to see everybody, and um, I think Arun said most of it, so I'm not you know, I, I will repeat what is very important, which is basically the three things you mentioned, right? So, and hard work, uh, and curiosity, and helping others, right? So, these three are basically the foundation of what you're going to, you know, basically get. And that the mindset towards that is, you know, what you will probably enjoy for the rest of your life as well. So, I think 
keep those three and know really what they mean. And that proactivity just um, is really important that you don't just sit, sit out and basically expect something. And another thing that probably that Arun didn't mention that I should tell you is that nothing we give you is polished because this is basically in part work. And whatever you are going to be given, whether in this week or in the coming weeks uh, when you join uh, the actual training, there's nothing polished. It's all about something along the line that we think is preparing you to job because we are not giving you the job, but somebody else is going to give you the job. And, and that somebody else, we learn from the industry by talking to them, by mining the job description that is posted everywhere in the internet and, and analyzing many things. We learn about what they want and what they desire. And most of them, and we talk to their engineers, you know, whether it's a big companies like in, in Facebook or Bookings or Google to smaller companies in different countries in, in Africa and outside Africa as well, that, you know, everybody wants somebody proactive, somebody that actually anticipates problem and solves problem and kind of help them in their business endeavor, right? So, and that means you should help us too. Like this is not about another learning uh, platform where you basically just get knowledge. It's more about like you really understand and shift your mindset to understanding the company's values. What, what do they value? What, why do they pay? Right. So it's a very much focus on, you know, how to be valuable in the work environment, not how to be good for yourself, not how to be, you know, anything else. It's all about focused about job. And, and then to get those jobs, you have to appeal and you have to be relevant to those jobs and everything that we do in, and we, we put our best effort there is to try to really familiarize you with that system and you know the, the very 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 essential component three months you'll not learn so much more because three months is very small but what really is uh, you're going to learn is the mindset the mindset to work in anywhere in the world and we call it intentionally you know a global level job what we mean is not it is independent of where you are it you know you can use the same knowledge and the same skill the same attitude and the same experience in your own country or outside your country in africa or outside africa anywhere in the world in, in all the continents and if you have seen you probably have seen that most of our trainees work all over the world right so so that means we are trying to be that preparing you for that global level job and the global level job requires a shift in your in your way of thinking you know you cannot be there with just only your own culture you have to understand other people's culture you have to understand what they really value you have to understand their biases as well and you have to compensate for their biases as well so that means communication um and proactive kind of uh, being you know even if they don't tell you asking questions and i think that you know you will you will have to get used to those things and you have to not be in your comfort zone if it's in your comfort zone most likely something is wrong so i would really say that you have to be focused on trying to get the best out of it and it is a process it's not like a destiny or something that we tell you we know you do this and you get there it's no it's like we know the directions where people are you know we have a yeah you have seen that most of our trainees have, have been placed into jobs 95 percent and more so that means we know i think our method is working we're confident on that but still things change the global situation change you know the work environment change and we're always adapting so that means it's not that as if we know and we tell you like uh, this but we give you the kind of the route to towards those where it will make you successful you know working for any company in the world and i think i will stop there from that perspective and then you know remember those three things that hard work uh, really put your best effort and um, curiosity, be really curious. That really involves curiosity, involves being proactive. It's not like you can't just be curious if you are, if you are waiting for you know, someone to tell you something. And then also just live in that community, get the best out of the community because the community represents everything from the team that you are working in an actual job to actually the life that you are going to live, you know, that basically is inseparable. So, these three things make sure you you know you don't forget them and you become proactive and act and participate in the community and know that that 
there is nothing that will give you that's completely polished and everything is ready. So if you are in doubt, ask, you know, ask the community and we, we, you know, you probably will receive immediately um, feedback from the community or the tutors or the, the carrier uh, team or everyone in, in Ten Academy. So, you know, with that, I will really say again, uh, welcome and looking forward for intensive week. So it's very, it's going to be very intensive and don't try to, you know, you know, there's so much stuff in the challenge that will disappoint you. For most of you, many things are new. And know that it is written clearly in the challenge document, read it again and again, if you are in doubt again, is that it's more than what you probably can deliver in one week. And even the best of you will struggle in this week. So it's not about like finishing, it's about trying and showing and demonstrating. And with that, I will stop and thank you and welcome. Rodas, I think we have some questions. Do you want to uh, do a Q&A or should we do it uh, directly? No, we could do it directly. Okay. Uh, so Yeva Bell, James asks, how are we measuring curiosity? It is, it is a very, like the first part is, I, I think I said it, it's being proactive, right? So we know, I mean, you're going to be analyzing this week, the, the Slack conversations of batch six, all of it, you know, anonymized, but, and we, you will see from the questions even we asked you to do, we measure curiosity in there as well, because we ask you who's active, who's the top, you know, who's replying fast, who's kind of posting references, you know, who are kind of reacting, all of that, right? So basically your participation and your way of attitude towards knowledge, skill, attitude, and, and, and trying to help the community, we measure that, um, your curiosity. And we have basically, that's what we use. Every data that you leave, you know, through our, throughout the training, you know, Slack, Gmeet, um, and also the, the challenge, the submissions that you do, we measure it from that. So I hope that answers. It's basically, we see you, like we try to get as much data points to measure, you know, how, how proactive and curious you are. And I hope that answers, if not, you can actually um, ask again in more detail. So may maybe I'll just add something to what uh, to what Yevabel said. I think <clears throat> that's maybe the data sided view, but the curiosity to me goes very much together with active learning. Um, a curious person is somebody in my mind who doesn't uh, who wants to learn and understand the material and spends a little bit of time reading maybe tries to read around the topic, tries to understand the why behind it. This is especially true when um, most of you, if you have a technology background, uh, you may not have ever asked yourself, what am I using? Uh, what is this program or this code going to be used for? Why am I putting this together? Um, what problem could the business have? And as you go on in your careers, that curiosity will expand and change from um, how do I what should I get done today? And that curiosity should grow into, what could I be doing so that we avoid a problem tomorrow into how do I use my time well to be able to prevent uh, future problems? So moving from almost a problem solver into a problem or a, a solution finder or a problem identifier. So I, what I can say is that uh, what we've seen is that the curious people often uh, spend a little bit more time take a few more risks. They're not really worried about their grade, but they're happy to try something out, to try and learn how something actually works. And it's very possible that um, in the short term, the curious people take a little bit more time and they may not get the best grade on the exam. But, 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 because we're going to be looking at the solutions, um, we usually have badges. We're not going to do it in week zero, but somebody who tries something different, even if it wasn't possible to get it working within a week, somebody who tried a completely, a completely different approach. So measurement of curiosity for us is, uh, I would say, asking good questions, trying new approaches, 
and uh, really trying to understand the why behind the exercises. Uh, Binyam asks, is there a leaderboard? Yes, there's a leaderboard um, that'll be available in the, uh, through the 10X platform. Are there any questions? Any other questions? You can put your hand up, you can type them here. Hundred and forty six people now on the call. It's still pretty impressive that the technology just works seamlessly. Um, there's a question, and I'm going to read it out. What do you propose in your curriculum to people with little to no programming experience coming to this platform for a career change? Um, I, I think we've said it. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce your name, but I am going to try. Uh, Techlet Sadik. The same as we said for everyone else. Um, what we've done is we've designed this, uh, especially this assessment week, for if you put the work into it and you use all of the support on offer, you will be able to get through. Now, somebody who has uh, more programming experience might find it a little bit easier because they're a bit further ahead. But we are here to measure, let's just recap what we're measuring. We're measuring work ethic, curiosity, and helping others. So it's absolutely possible to, uh, to make it work. Now, your journey will be probably a little bit harder, and the analogy that we've used in the past is somebody who wants to learn to run a marathon or get a six pack. Now, if you are coming to a training program and you've spent the last year sitting on the couch and you want to learn to run a marathon, you know, you can still do it. It's going to be a little bit harder and you're going to have to be a little bit more dedicated to catch up. Or if you've been eating a lot of chips and you want to get a six pack uh, and you have a lot of uh, weight on top of that six pack, it's going to be a bit harder. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's not possible. But I think there, the mindset becomes really important. Yavaba, anything to add? I mean, I, I think you put it nicely. So I would say exactly. It's going to be harder. But if you are determined, I think it's possible. Because it it's basically means working, you know. I think we have seen that people who really came to this program, you know, without even from a completely different background, not in software engineering or anything programming and made it really became the best programmers we have put out, but they had to put so much effort. And so I think that's why hard work is, you know, irreplaceable for us, you know, however good you are, um, it's almost, it's almost with the, you know, the challenge that we are facing in this stream kind of this short time training is really immense. And if you don't have already that background or something in experience, it means a lot more hard uh, work that you have to do to accomplish it, but it's possible. Yeah, uh, so Miki S says, uh, will watching them give you an advantage? Maybe, um, I think it's possible, but I don't think, I wouldn't spend my time watching old videos, I would rather spend my time working on the challenges which are given. Um, I think you'll, it's in terms of optimizing your time, I think that's a better way forward. Uh, Khaled, yes, absolutely, there is a limit. Uh, our hard limit is around 75. Um, so we're going to be, we only have a limited number of people that we can accept on the program. Abraham, the training is for six months. Uh, we have a three month uh, technical training and then three months of a supported job search phase. Um, Abraham, you've received a schedule. If you haven't received a schedule, it's going to be posted. So today we're going to have a weekly, ch we're going to have a challenge and the challenge will outline what you need to get done today. Two tutorials, community building session and a submission at 8 uh, p.m. UTC. We're going to be using UTC time because we have people from across the continent. So UTC time is our standard coordinating time. Uh, Fanel, Fanuel, some of us with time constraints, is it really a problem as long as we meet the deadline for the challenge and the task submissions? Is it okay to postpone meetings or catch up at a later time? Um, I don't really understand the question. Uh, Fanuel, can you unmute and ask your question? Or you can type your question. Yeah, okay, so Fanuel, maybe you can type your question. 
Uh, so, Karad, I think uh, we, we can talk about the three-month job search phase in more detail afterwards, but uh, we will put groups together. We provide people with um, auto search jobs. We give them recommendations of jobs that fit with them. We work with them on their CVs. We prepare for every single interview. We help people prepare cover letters. Um, but the most thing that we do is we've realized that searching for work is difficult, dealing with uh, interviews is difficult, dealing with rejection is difficult, and working together makes that much, much, much more successful. Um, so it's going to be similar a little bit. Uh, it'll be intense in a different way. Less hands-on programming, and it'll be more batch days of job applications and then support for uh, as I said, applications, interviews, and uh, the job search phase. So we can talk about that in more detail. If there's a request for more information, you can uh, ask the question in the Slack channel, and we can uh, perhaps have a tutorial on that. Sessions be across the week. Uh, so no key. So you should, uh, what we've seen in the past is that, uh, again, it's not about how much time one spends in sessions. Um, it's about getting the work done. And we've seen that from eight to eight is about the amount of time that uh, most successful people spend. Um, most people, you should be planning to be working full time plus, uh, I would say about uh, eight to 12 hours per day, every day this week in order to be successful. Um, the sessions will be less. We have our six core hours per day, but I think everyone should be spending, planning to spend an additional six hours on that. One point that I think we haven't mentioned, very important to mention, uh, when we design the training, we want to make sure that everyone who is here is gaining something for him or herself. So even if um, you start and then you realize this is not for you, or if you're not able to keep up with the training, or you're not successful in securing a space, we believe quite strongly and we've designed the work in such a way that it'll be useful for you. So when we talk about uh, sessions versus doing the work yourself, Actually, doing the work yourself is uh, useful for you in building the career that um, we understand that you're looking for. So our guidance would be prepare yourself to be able to spend 8 to 12 hours a day every day this week. Can we get resources for the challenges during the week, or do we need to find them ourselves? The answer is both. Uh, you should be looking yourself. If you find something useful, post it in the day one group, not the general group, not the community group posted in the day one group, because if you have a question, others will also probably have a similar question. Rudolf asked a question about payment. Um, so we had to change our financial model uh, for a couple of different reasons, but mainly we are a small private organization. We have to be financially sustainable. And what we've seen is that um, people are able to get placed into work. Um, and uh, that repayment has to come back to us to enable us to continue, uh, to continue to operate. What we will say is that uh, the majority, if, if there's a real need, then do speak to us. And we're happy to have a discussion to make sure that ability, ability to pay is not necessarily a barrier to entry into the program. That being said, um, we do have to look very, careful at, very carefully at the results and the, at the success that you've had during this week. So in brief summary, what that means is if you did really well, put a lot of work into the program this week, and you're not able to make a contribution at the same level as we're asking for, happy to have a discussion. Uh, on the other side, we've had people in the past who have said they weren't able to show up during the week. They put very little effort into it, and then they still said they weren't able to make a contribution. In that case, we're very unlikely to, make, uh, to be flexible there. Um, are the yeah, all times will be in UTC, uh, Anania, uh, Fanuel. It's if you miss a meeting or two, uh, we do look at uh, we do look at attendance and we'll continue to look at attendance. Um, it's but it's only one measure, so it's not a meeting, there are tutorials, you can ask questions. Attending the, ma the majority of them is important, but if you and we'll say this again, people who are not able to attend the course full-time um, are unlikely to be successful and we're unlikely to offer them a spot. Why is that the case? We recognize week zero is still, people are getting used to it. Uh, week one starts on the 11th of December. This is not a part-time course and everyone who is here is asking for a deferred, uh, deferred tuition payment. 
So if uh, you're not able to be full-time during the assessment week, then we have to make sure that, um, yeah, we're unlikely to offer a deferred tuition spot because we don't want people who are here part-time. Uh, what do we need to install on our computer software? I think that'll be part of the technical uh, challenge. That's going to be the first tutorial. Uh, Lamy asks, what are the punishments if we're able to submit the challenges on time? So the greatest punishment is the punishment to yourself that you just didn't submit on time. You probably learned less than usual. Um, we are going to be simulating what it's like in the world of work. And in the world of work, uh, our understanding is that it's much more important to be on time than to be perfect. So you must submit on time. We do have a late policy. I can't remember what that is right now or exactly what that is, so I'm not going to comment on it. It will be communicated. I believe it's part of the challenge document. But essentially, after a very short grace period, um, it's almost not worth handing in late anymore. You need to hand in whatever you have on time. Emmanuel asks, how many of the challenges that we submit should be our own work and how much should be referenced? Um, everything should be your own work. We recognize that you're not going to be, if you're using libraries, if you found a piece of code which is somewhere out there, as long as you understand it and you've integrated it yourself and the overall package is your work, uh, I believe we're fine with that. If you've collaborated with somebody, you should reference that. Um, yeah, I think this we have this own work uh, statement, which is part of the code of conduct, and I think that covers that. So Emmanuel, if you have any questions, you can ask. Uh, payment, Lillian, uh, please be in touch with Rodas. I think we can talk about that in more detail. Um, Lanjisa asks, what resources or tools are provided to support participants throughout the program? So we have a, I would say we have a framework. One is that we have the technical challenges which are there to guide each and every person through what they should be learning. Um, and if you add those up over the weeks, then from a technical as well as from a career side, that's part of it. And those include resources, those include the design of the challenges, the active learning that you should be doing, the passive learning that you should be doing, the tutorials. So that's one. Two is the guest talks, which are there to provide uh, people with an understanding of what's happening in industry. Third are the human resources, which are the tutors, careers tutors, and the entire team which is there to support you. Fourth is the 10x platform, which will be uh, continually upgraded to provide more and more information and custom feedback. Um, and then the fifth is all of the, uh, I, maybe this is the most important thing, an understanding of what mindset is required um, to be working at the global level. Do we get students hired like recommendations to companies? So I believe, Abby, uh, if we didn't, then you wouldn't be here. Uh, I definitely wouldn't be here if we were still unsuccessful. People do get hired. We don't, uh, we're not in the placement game uh, only and not directly. Uh, a lot of, more and more of our trainees are getting jobs uh, independent of us. Uh, now, yes, you will be getting individual feedback uh, in every case. Uh, and if you ever have a question on, sub on a submission or you want to ask more questions, then that's why we have a team of full-time tutors. Uh, Fanuel, yeah, I think that's in general that's fine, but we'll if if that's going to be the case uh, every single time, then that probably means you are doing something in parallel, and we absolutely don't want that for deferred tuition payees. So if if you hope to have a full time job for three months while doing the program, um, that's generally speaking not suitable for somebody who wants to pay tuition afterwards. We can have a discussion about that. But you have to view the deferred tuition almost as a scholarship that we're providing. And uh, we want those scholarships to go to people who are ready to put the effort in. Um, that's, uh, we recognize that that's, that's difficult. It may not be a fit for everyone. We're ready to, be, to discuss with people uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. But we do want people to be full-time. Why is that? Because we've seen that you can be, it's, it's actually a big jump that we're asking you to make. It's not only the technical side of it. It's not only the understanding the business side of it. It's not only the communication side of it. It's not only getting your CV correct. It's not only the curiosity. Um, it's all of that together in a very short period of time. And so that's why if you're doing something else in parallel, 
we're not exactly sure and we're not we're pretty based on what we see, we've seen in the past it's very difficult to do that um it's very difficult to do that well while you are doing uh something else while you were i don't know doing whatever else is preventing you from attending the tutorials uh mekant and again i'm sorry if i'm getting the names wrong um or i'm pronouncing them incorrectly the challenges will be a mix of individual and group, uh, and that will be very clearly communicated for each challenge. Binyam asks, what do you mean by getting a job independently? That means that um, you do the work, you follow the process, we help you with your CV, we help you with your cover letter, we get you projects on your profile, your GitHub is active and updated and busy, and uh, we work with you, but you apply to a job to a company directly, you get the interview, we work with you to be successful in that interview, and you get placed into the job. Versus, uh, we know a company that's looking to hire, and we say, person A, person B, uh, you should be interviewing this person. So we are not the gatekeeper. So independently means that you've gotten the job on the open market, and through us, we would say, is where we are the gatekeeper. So Ezra asks a question. I'm from Ethiopia. What are the acceptable payment methods? Ezra, we're going to have to discuss that. Please uh, write to Rodas, or you can ask the question on Slack. Emmanuel asks, uh, I heard and read and heard that you mentioned about gender equality. Uh, I'd like to ask you what your policy is in support of disabled communities that want to participate in the training. Excellent question. Um, we are ready to make uh, any necessary accommodations. We have had people in, the, in previous editions of the training with hearing disabilities, we've had people with uh, other disabilities. We're happy to have a discussion with any person who needs an accommodation, and we will do our best to uh, accommodate. Now, we are a small organization, um, so while we'll, we will do our best, uh, we hope that we'll be able to uh, make the necessary accommodation. Helena asks, um, how is the team arranged? Uh, I don't know exactly what that means. Uh, Helena, maybe you can unmute and ask the question in more detail. And while we're waiting for that, Abenezer asks, is the program in person or uh, online? Um, <laughs> I mean, we're, we're doing it online. Yeah, I mean, I, I was gonna make a joke to say we're all together and you're the only one who's not here, but I think I won't do that. No, it's a fully online course. Uh, we do expect that people uh, may meet up from time to time, especially if there are lots of people uh, in the same country or in the same city. Uh, we know there's lots of people in Addis, in Nairobi. Um, we have groups in Kigali, groups in Lagos. So it's not a formal part of the program at present. Um, but what we do have is that we don't, we want it to be fully online, but it should be a synchronous online program. So during core hours, which is 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. UTC, um, things are going to be busy. And after that, it's more independent learning time. Uh, Moika asks, at what time were most trainees placed in global level jobs after completing the training? Um, I, if I understand your question correctly, Moika, I believe you're asking about how long does it take? Um, my our belief is you should be ready to work for about a year so training time plus six months is about how long you should uh, be ready to think and a large part of that is that companies you may not believe it companies are really 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 slow so even in the best case from your first application to actually starting work can easily take you four months uh, by the time you interview second interview technical challenge review of technical challenge final interview, reference checks, contracting, start date, and then actually starting, that process can easily take you months and months and months, and that's in the best of cases. So things can take time. Carrot asks, for someone who's making a career change, does not having a background in tech impact them in the job search, even after a successful completion of the training program? Um, it depends, right? You need to, so one thing that I wanna say right up front is no company is going to do you a favor. Um, they will hire you to deliver value. Um, they're going to pay you $1,000 because they want you to earn them $3,000, $5,000. Now, during the application process, during the interview process, what they're trying to judge is, 
what is the likelihood of you being able to not only earn them three thousand dollars five thousand dollars but to be able to grow into somebody who's going to earn them ten fifteen thirty thousand dollars they want to assess that now if somebody has more experience that gives them more information and more data versus somebody who has uh, if they don't have a lot of uh, tech experience then um, yeah it's, it's a little bit of a higher risk so does it have an impact I would say yes to what extent does that have an impact it depends um, and an example I would give you and I like giving examples is if you were going to find a place to go for lunch and you were going and you saw three chefs standing in a row and one person has never cooked before and the other person had been running a successful restaurant for 10 years, they were all charging uh, similar prices and had similar restaurants, where would you be more likely to eat? The person that had been cooking for 10 years or the person who said, you know what, I used to be a taxi driver, but today I'm, I'm, I've taken a course, I'm gonna be a really good chef. It's gonna take that, I would think the person with no experience might take a little bit longer, especially to get started, but that's exactly why we're here, to take you from perhaps no experience to jump that gap and then to keep uh, moving onwards from that. Uh, Denise uh, Uitonze asks, is it possible that someone can be put on the waiting list so that he or she can be called back to the screening in the next cohort? Um, what we've had in the past, Denise, is that people who are successfully, they have successfully gone through part of the training that they may be able to get an automatic entry into week zero. But at this point, frankly speaking, we don't have enough information to um, to judge that you know somebody can be automatically called back to the training. So our next applications, cohort B, will be open early 2024, uh, probably by February. So one is welcome to apply, but please be in touch with Rodas. You can send her an email, write her on Slack, and then we can figure that out. Lanjisa asks, uh, is what during intensive training? Is the intensive training program fixed, or is there flexibility in terms of timing or participation? The it's absolutely fixed. Uh, we have very little flexibility. It's going to be very, very, very regimented. Um, things are going to be new challenges every almost every week. Um, Sunday late night uh, new challenge. Saturday night submissions. It's not a learn at your own pace uh, type of program. It's uh, it's intensive. So when we say intensive. It's, there is a program, it's not learn at your own pace. Everyone starts together and everyone finishes together. Everyone learns together, uh, it needs to be like that. Um, Biniam asks, which companies have your previous alumni been placed to? I would uh, look at the website, we have a listing and a map of where people are working. Uh, Biniam asks, how did we help them get the jobs? This whole thing, I mean, this is where it's a thousand steps to achieve something. And so this is one of the thousand steps. So. I, I'll recap what uh, we do. We only do three things. It takes a thousand steps to do those three things. Step one is identify high potential people. Step two is give them the necessary technical and career skills. And step three is make sure that they have a profile, skills, confidence. Um, they have the script. They know how to present themselves. They know how to tell the story. They know how to talk to people um, to enable them to get through those interviews. Um, Abdi asks, how long would you say the curriculum will stay relevant given how fast things are changing and especially in the field of AI? Abdi, I would say the curriculum will be relevant for a short period of time. Um, but remember that we are providing people with, uh, and so anyone else on the team, you have about, it's just, I'm just talking, so just jump in uh, because I'm just going to keep talking. Um, how long, the, the skills, the technical skills that we're going to provide you will probably be out of date pretty soon. The, this is why we're looking for curious people, for hardworking people, people who can help others, because those things will not go out of style. Those things, we believe, cannot be replaced by the newest um, AI system from OpenAI. So we want you to get onto the global level ladder, and if you have the right skills to do that, then we've seen that people uh, with the right mindset with the right approach with the right attitude with the right set of curiosity they will be able to be successful now fortunately or unfortunately abdi those things that we're trying to teach are pretty rare so we believe that if you can get those you will actually be able to distinguish distinguish yourselves beyond uh, most people from different parts of the world beyond the americans 
beyond the Germans. Um, if you're ready to work hard, if you're curious, you're ready to be helpful and nice to other people, those skills are the ones that stay in fashion. So the technical skills are only part of it. Um, it's more the, the mindset. And that's what we've been told year after year, time after time. It's that, what's, uh, it's that what is most useful. Uh, recordings will be uploaded, Kulani. Um, recordings will be uploaded, as Roda said, within two hours, we'll do our best. Uh, if it's not two hours, then it'll be almost two hours. Every class, every tutorial will be recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel. Uh, Karen asks, what's the YouTube address of 10 Academy? I'm not going to tell you because you can find that out yourself. Um, it's not private, of course, if it's public. So you can find that out yourself. Then Jisa asks, how would you rate the preparedness of previous alumni upon completing the intensive training program? Uh, I'll go back to our placement rates. Our placement rates, as Yabba Bell said, 95% within 12 months. So I think the preparedness, uh, I would say, is good. But what's most important within that, not everyone was prepared at the same level. But what we saw is that there was, uh, we made, we want to have a system where the more work that you put in, the more success you will get. And I would say that uh, it was not perfectly linear, but there was a pretty good linearity in there. So the more work people put into it, Lenchisa, the more prepared they were. The less work they put into it, the less prepared they were. So I think that covers all the questions. Uh, we have 11 minutes before our next session. Uh, Mikias asks, will the program solely focus on the field of AI or does it have a broader range of focus on other fields as well? We have four exit points. We're looking for generative AI engineer, machine learning engineer, data engineer, or web three engineer. So I believe that answers your question. We're not preparing people to be uh, web developers. So those are four careers that we're looking for you to uh, prepare yourself for. Ezra asks, how do we choose the field or we don't? Of course, you have to choose the field. This is your career. Uh, we are only here to support you. So you will have to choose the field. We would, uh, that process will start in the middle around week six because when you start applying for jobs, you have to be very specific about the type of job that you're looking for. So how do you choose the field? That's why we're here. We're here to help you. That's why we have a careers team. That's why we have a process. That's why we have experience. Um, so we'll work with you to choose uh, those fields. Does anyone want to ask a live question? Does anyone trust themselves to put their hand up and to ask Yababel a question live? I'm going to put him on the spot. Anyone? Abel. Um, hi, guys. Um, I want to thank everyone, like before I say anything, uh, for getting this chance. Um, having said that, I want to ask about, um, like, the, as we know, like most of us here are in Ethiopia and we encounter a lot of internet connection issues. Um, are there situations where we have to be um, strictly online, like for hours and stuff like that. I mean, um, like, uh, does my question make sense? I mean, Arun puts me to answer the live question. So, um, Abel, no, I think it's uh, there isn't. I think you should attend the, you know, the live meetings, the tutorials, and and as well as the stand-up. The stand-up is more important because this is where we synchronize. But we also put, for exactly that reason, not only in Ethiopia, but everywhere in Africa is more or less the same, that internet or power is an issue. And we recognize that so that, you know, that's why we are Africa focused. That means we deal with whatever is there, right? It's like from end to end. Um, and therefore, that's why we record it. We put it. If you miss something, you go and you can go and watch it. If you miss something, you can. There is Slack, which is at any time that you can connect, and you can go and ask questions, uh, whatever you missed. And usually, the community is more than willing to tell you what you have missed, what important things were there. If you didn't attend because of you know power cut or internet issue or any other thing that you may encounter. So yeah, I think we have we're redundant. That means just because you have an internet interruption or power cut, it basically doesn't affect much your your work thing. Hope that answers your question. Um, yes, it does. Thank you, doctor. 
So Jonas asks, can we get something about the fields like what is Web3 machine learning AI? Yes, uh, we'll provide that. Uh, not yet because it's too early, but uh, we will provide that. Um, but I, I mean, this is this is part of where the curiosity comes in, right? It's uh, that that question is fine, but you could also ask a more specific question. So what do you mean? I think everyone here. If they don't know what Web3 is, machine learning is, AI is, those are pretty easy to learn. So what's the next step behind that question? What's the, what, is, uh, what are we trying to learn by asking that question? Uh, Jara asks, do you continue your support for previous batch students even after the three months job search period? Absolutely. So we have an alumni community. All of our alumni are part of that community. We support each other in finding jobs and sharing resources. If there's something new uh, which is coming up, then we will do our best uh, to share that. We try and if we hear of jobs that are coming up, we try and reach out to our alumni community first. We know that alumni have gone gone together and formed startup companies. They've gotten each other hired uh, at companies that they're working at. So we are not, you know, we're not here as a training organization. What we're trying to do is to build a movement of people uh, to create this workforce. That's why we're not focused on skills. Uh, we're focused on competencies. We're focused on mindset. We're focused on people who can help other people because we think that in the long term, that's what's going to win. Um, combine two fields for AI and Web3. Um, it's very difficult. Uh, if you're trying to get a job, remember, our goal here is to get people a job. Now, if there's a job where you need to combine AI and Web3 skills, then Rudolf, let's discuss. Um, but I think that's rather uh, not at the junior level. I haven't seen many jobs that combine implementation of AI and Web3. If there is, then happy to discuss it. Otherwise, uh, I wouldn't I recommend mean, I think I, I, I will comment on that. Uh, I think you learn all of it. So I think there's no, it's only on this, I think Arun's comment is more on when you are searching for a job, right? So when you are specializing for a job, you're basically going to be where I think exactly as Arun said, it is to you know in your best interest to actually focus on one area because that but in the training you implement everything right so you will implement web3 you will implement ai you will implement machine learning data engineering there is you know that that part is not what we are discussing but you will specialize and choose where you are strong at after seeing all of this you will be able to then specialize by specialization in this case where are you strong and what's your interest? Combine that towards actually then focusing on that area for job application. So just to make it very clear. Yeah. No, I think that's absolutely correct. Um, Karen? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 So my question is of the 12 months uh, intensive training. How many will, will be assigned for uh, Web3, uh, AI, ML, and so on? So we have a six month intensive training. But sorry, I'll let, let, let you go over to you. Uh, it's, so it's just, I'm sure, I assume 12 months, you mean 12 weeks. Um, and yeah, 12, yeah, weeks 12 weeks is for, yeah. Yeah, for the training uh, and then 12 weeks job search. So it's basically we are adding every time. And so normally we have at least two to make it. Um, a stream usually we have at least three projects that you can demonstrate so that means in the past we had three web three and but within the, um, and then data engineering and as well as uh, machine learning machine learning is becoming now everywhere like in in that sense and the same is generative AI is um, in every sense like so we you will have certain sets at least Abraham, can you mute? So, so basically that you will at least to consider it a stream, you will have uh, at least three uh, projects that that you will work. But in the case of now, I think we, we are adding generative AI and the way we do it is not just only directly focused on it, but throughout the training, for example, you will have generative AI element of it. So. It means that for some of them that is basically in, in the intersection of everything, we have more projects um, than others. But for Web3, for example, 
you probably would have um, more or less because it's not overlapping much and we have to focus particularly on it, then it's less than, let's say, uh, machine learning or generative AI. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it does. Thank you. Nikias? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, first of all, like my peers, I would like to say thank you for this opportunity. My question is most of the task submission is 5 p.m. Uh, in uh, East African time. If I'm not wrong, I think it's 2 p.m. in UTC. Is that on purpose? Uh, I think there could be more time, like it can be until midnight or something, since most of the developers like to work on night time. So that's my question, if it makes sense. Should be 8 p.m. UTC, which is 11 p.m. Uh, East Africa. Yes, that's that's what it is. Is it on purpose? Yeah, 11 or? means 11 means like midnight almost. So it's UTC. East Africa is UTC plus three. So which <laughs> means uh, if you have it, it, UTC eight, which is the evening uh, at 8 p.m. and then you add three, so that's 11. So almost midnight. One hour before midnight. Does that does that answer your question, Mikias? I understand the other thing, but can we get the one extra hour? Respect? You need to sleep. Yeah. So that's that's why we're also going to force people to take Sundays off. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, I think you know, in the past, I mean, maybe this is just uh, we select really hungry, curious and really motivated to help others people. Usually sometimes we struggle also to make them, you know, to not hurt your own health, right? So you have to to be really, you know, and it's a full time and I think it's, uh, you can't, uh, otherwise you will not attain the standups and all of that. And it's a work thing, right? So it's uh, any, every work, you have to attain the standup and which means you have to be active there as well, which means you have to sleep. So I think that balance is important. So hopefully, yeah. Okay, so just to go quickly through the rest of the typed questions and we'll go into the challenge introduction. Binyam asks, <clears throat> do we get to implement uh, research papers with the ML engineering stream? I would answer that's not part of the curriculum, but it doesn't prevent you from going ahead and doing it. So we're not uh, research focused. Let's be very clear, our goal is to get people global level jobs. Um, there's, we're not solving all of the problems at once. If you're here, we're here to help you get a job. We're not PhD prep, we're not research paper prep. If you're interested in doing that, we can have a separate discussion, but our intensive training is focused on jobs. Um, Lanjisa asks, are there means to identify and align individual strengths and interests with particular program tracks or fields of study? There are, I would say, the two main ways we do that, one is human to human, so with your tutors or with uh, the overall staff, we'll discuss with you and make sure that you we talk to you and we agree on which uh, route you want to take. And the second is you'll see emerging, increasing capabilities from our learning platform, the 10X platform, that will be giving you increased individual feedback um, to help you go whichever direction it is that you want to go. So it's a bit of a generic answer at this point, but that'll come. Um, I'm just going to type here end of questions so that we can keep moving. Um, Ahmed asks, when I read online about DS careers, some people claim that an MSc or PhD is necessary to be successful. Is it true? And how can we be competing with people who have an MSc or PhD? Um, those are different jobs, right? So it depends when you talk about, and these are very big terms, to be successful. What does that mean? Um, people who are yeah, so short answer is no. Um, we've proved it ourselves. People can get good jobs um, without, they can get a good first job without a master's or a PhD. Now, that probably means that the people with master's or PhDs are doing different jobs. Um, and so the question I would ask back is what sort of job are you talking about? So this generic claim that you can't get a data science job or let's leave data science aside, that you can't get an AI job without a master's or a PhD. Is, uh, we have lots of counterexamples, so we can say that's not the case. But there are, I would say, AI jobs where a master's or a PhD 
is probably necessary. Now, it doesn't mean that there are not lots of jobs for both people. Uh, Mint as not uh, Mint is not says, what about the down payment? It can be done monthly or not. Many of us may find it difficult to pay at once. So it sounds like this is a recurring question and um, we will be back in touch and maybe we need to have a, a session on this uh, to ask about the down payment. As mentioned, and I'll say it again, we are ready to make accommodations for some of the best performing students because we do want to make the program accessible. Um, that being said, we will look at people's performance and especially more than the performance is the effort that they're putting into it when making these decisions. Tohib asks, is there any clear distinction between generative AI engineering path and an NLP path? So we don't have a specific NLP path. We do have an ML engineering path. Is there a distinction? Yes. Um, and Tohib, maybe we can, if you have a very specific question, um, we can discuss it uh, during the course of the program. So Yebabel asks, how much will the six months payment? So again, we'll discuss that afterwards. So I think we can stop recording with us and uh, Thank you everyone for being here. I think stay on the stay on the call because we're going to go straight into the challenge introduction. Let's use the